Good morning. Welcome to 50 Questions Friday for March 24th of 2023. And it is good to be here today. Um, if you are here live, you are welcome to drop your questions over on the questions tab. And otherwise, the chat um, is for chatting. There's some really wonderful people that always show up here that help to provide extra information and clarifications on things and their experiences. So I appreciate all of you who are sharing your experiences here with everybody. Um, hey, good morning, Valerie from Colorado. Good to see you here again. I guess I saw you in person here about a week ago. Uh, and it was good to see you. Christine from Oz. Hey, Victoria from Northern Cali. Oh my goodness. I'm actually, I should show you where I'm at right here. I'm up in the mountains of Colorado on my way to I'll see some friends. Let me see if I can actually show you guys the beautiful view outside. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Oh, I don't. Snowy mountains. Hey, Marsha from North Carolina. Atlanta, Telford. Well, I always appreciate everybody from all over the world who shows up, even in the middle of the night and early mornings. Um, so let's see. We will go ahead and um, let's just start by going into the heart space. So your attention to the physical heart, closing your eyes if you wish, and imagining connecting heart to heart with the earth and just breathing in that supporting, grounding, loving energy of the earth up through the feet, into the heart, and just allowing her to envelop you. And then connecting with you as creator God, as soul, and breathing in that light. And the third breath, bring them both those together so that you are grounded, connected, and the conduit for heaven and earth. Because it is truly your light which brings heaven on earth. Uh, awesome ceremony from Crimson Circle on chat here yeah that was pretty fantastic um so yeah if any of you haven't checked it out one uh, the crimson circle just had a free um thing here on the 22nd a couple days ago um for what they call the heaven's cross but it's just basically that opening that i've that you've heard me discussing um and it's really a powerful powerful space to sit in and um that exercise that they do with the soul altar is just huge of basically taking everything and setting it on your soul altar you know while you're in the heart space while you're connected with you and simply sitting it there and stepping away and that is your, um, it's kind of like a ceremony for the mind and that you are simply handing it over to soul and allowing soul to take that situation, that energy, that trauma, that lifetime, whatever it is, and bring it back to you as wisdom. And it really is a fantastic exercise. Um, Let's see, just thinking of any announcements. Um, we have the new collar rings that will get up on the website here. You know, they're just the collar rings that we've always made that are, you know, you take a circle and you elongate it and then one part of it curves up and the other part's flat. And then it just sits over the head and around the chest here. Anyway, we have a couple in that, in that wisdom energetics that we will release two different sizes. And I was trying to think, um, there's nothing else for new tools here at the moment. Um, you know, I guess I can going back to the wisdom wand, the wisdom wand still my ultimate favorite tool. And as I tell everybody, it is what helped me get through about a year and a half of the deep personal clearing work. Um, 
such as as anything comes up in your physical, mental, emotional awareness, life situation, reactions. Reactions was the huge thing for me. Uh, got vacuum cleaner going outside. Hopefully it's not too loud. But yeah, reactions were the thing that got me. And it's like we carry this little tuning fork within us, this little resonant thing. It's something outside of us, you know, that is that we feel is causing us to have a reaction. It is simply that outside of us which um, causes the reaction within. The reaction isn't what's outside of us. It is what it is what is within us. And so basically the wisdom wand has been one that um, just sitting there with this and being in that space of, of your light, untainted, untaintable all around you. And when you hold on to that wisdom wand and you're in that heart space, it's like you have divine awareness. It's like when you put your awareness onto something, um, especially if you have gratitude for it and, and not judging it, um, everything shifts. Again, your light brings it into wisdom. And then you don't have that reaction, that little resonant thing that you carry anymore. So anyway, a lot of fun stuff. Hey, good morning, Nancy. Hey, Samson. Um, let's see. So anyway, if anybody has any questions, please do drop them here on the questions tab. Questions um, on on the tools, specifics, or the consciousness work. Um, and I was trying to think if there was anything else for announcement. We just got done with our um, soul alchemy class. Uh, we did six sessions and it was pretty amazing. I'm not sure what happened in the first three, but the last three were flipping phenomenal. Um, you know, the first three was a lot of, a lot of concepts. The first one I was very ungrounded and, um, I don't even know what to say about the first episode, but um, if you do choose to watch that, it is at twistedsage.vhx.tv. That's twistedsage.vhx.tv. Um, it's a $44 uh, class, but you also get the light workers class with it, which is also free on YouTube, but we have it on there where you can download it if you wish. And you can download and stream all of these, all the videos from that soul alchemy. But we did some pretty amazing things um, in, in clearing just a lot of the debris. But we'll, we'll go through some of those exercises and I'm going to be sharing more of those exercises here with everybody. Um, hey, Victoria from New York City. Well, good morning. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think. We have some I have an upcoming event in Cincinnati, Ohio. It is on the April 15th weekend, Saturday and Sunday. And um, yeah, so if you are in the region of Cincinnati, Ohio, please join us. We'll, we'll have the Ascension Pyramid there. We'll actually have the Ascension Pyramid and then my pyramid booth. They'll be right across from each other. Um, and so anyway, and two, if you are looking for any opportunities, uh, if you are in that area, um, I'm looking for somebody to help me with the setup and tear down. It takes about an hour to set up and about an hour, hour and a half to tear down and just need somebody who can stand up a 13 foot tall pyramid. Um, and so basically, yep, I need some, some heavy lifting help. So if anybody's in the area, please do let me know and we'll work out some payment options with you. So, well, let's see. Uh, Christine on the Soul Alchemy class, absolutely amazing, and the shifts within huge. I'm very glad to hear that, Christine, that you found some, some shifts in there. Um, you know, it is amazing. I, I've had a couple, I've done a couple sessions since, um, you know, because I also do, do sessions, the uh, uh, distance phone sessions. And, you know, I'm going to have to change those because when I was offering those, it was about stepping into you as the master creator and having you as the, the master creator in this third density reality go through an uncreate creation that no longer serves. 
And again, it was, it was, that was a step again. And as we keep growing, we, we take all these steps and put it into, you know, you don't have to go through the steps. And that's the way all these tools are. And all of the consciousness work that we do is it is all based on little steps, but you don't have to do the little steps. You can go straight to the top of the escalator without having to do all that work. And um, I tell you, the the um, the sessions that I did yesterday, I cannot believe how quick and easy people sat down everything. I mean, they sat down everything, identity. I mean, it's like we found that there was still something being held on in the field. And they're like, no, I mean, you could see there when their aspects step in and just be like, nope. And they hand it to soul. And it's just really amazing to watch people embodying their light. And that's truly what we saw like in this Denver expo that was um, last weekend was, um, you know, that was part of one of the things that I started to see is people either they, their, their light comes in and it's just outside of them and they're not letting it in or they let it in just a little bit. And so as of like yesterday, I mean, I was just seeing people just clearing everything to allow their light, their soul to be fully present and embodied. And this is so exciting because you guys, this is truly, you know, the old paradigm of twisted sage and the creating of the tools was for doing that dense clearing work that we perceived as outside of us. So it was really us stepping in and um, as, as anybody who's using the tool, stepping in and doing that really, really high leading edge, fighting the dark <laughs> work, you know, uh, light workers at its ultimate best. And then, you know, 2020, the rug gets pulled out from under us because that is no longer the paradigm of fighting the dark. And it is about transforming that into wisdom and light and realizing that there's nothing outside of you, that everything is your energy and you truly are the master creator of your entire creation. Um, anyway, deep stuff, but I tell you, it changes everything. And so a lot of concepts in the soul alchemy class. And so I, I do encourage you to check that out. All right, um, we'll go to questions here. Uh, JR, do we need to focus on the wisdom wand, as you mentioned, or is it a passive tool? So the wisdom wand and the pendants and the small wands, <clears throat> they can be used as a passive tool. I mean, I keep mine on my person all the time, um, you know, in my pocket or in my car or wherever. This is my original and I try to clean up because it's gone through so many hot springs. Um, Passively, it is great, <clears throat> but to actively use it, it really, it really gets in and and clears the things that come up in your awareness. So passively having it on you is going to basically help create that field, <clears throat> bring in more of your light and raise frequency vibration. Well, that's just what happens when you bring in your light. And when you bring in your light, it is it's, it's shifting, it's clearing a lot of those things that you're just ready to let go of. Um, but to really get in and let go of those things that are just holding on a little bit tighter that you may not be conscious and aware of. And again, that comes up usually as an, a reaction to something outside of you. And so using the wisdom wand, it's just simply going into the heart space in imagining that field around you. So when I first used the wand, how I saw it was like it created this fibrous cocoon around you. And within it was your light, just brilliant, untaintable, untainted, just brilliant light. And when you're in that space and you look at something, you are simply putting your divine awareness onto it, your soul light. And that is what is shifting what is perceivably outside of you, but is truly internal. And it is shifting that, turning that to wisdom. So it does not have to be a complicated exercise at all. It's going into the heart space, holding the wand, 
and just imagining that you are shining your light on whatever it is that came up, which is perceived outside, which clears the internal. So it is an active and a passive tool. And of course, the wisdom one, again, it's one of my favorites because if we have, if we ever get stuck in a pain body where we're just like, oh man, it's hard to connect and I mean, chaos and everything else, or this pain is so bad, you know, whatever that is, that is, you know, helping keep you disconnected. Um, you can use the wand to run energy to that physical or imagine running it to the entire body or to you know, a heartache, a mental thing, or a situation. And as you run the energy, again, that is just a way for you to send your divine awareness, your light to that situation to turn that to wisdom. So, and actively wanding is pretty phenomenal. And that's why we have the, <clears throat> excuse me, the wisdom wands are always the, the buy two, what, uh, what is it? Buy two, get one free, I think. Or, uh, gosh, I don't even know. You have to look at the website for sure. I think if you buy one, you get the second one half off, I believe. And buy two, get one free. I'm not certain. Don't quote me on that. But we try to set up the best deal as possible on these wisdom wands because they are so amazing. Um, they do beautiful things. A question from uh, Vienna. Do the wisdom energy tools contain the I am energy? Yes. So basically the wisdom tools are a culmination of the set of three rings that we created, which we call the alchemist set. So it came through first as the chalice energetic. And then we had the harmonizer ring and the chalice is the crystal clear, pure, pure consciousness. It is like, ah, it's like your light untainted and untaintable. It's just crystal clear, pure, pure consciousness. It is the energy of the I am of source creation. And then there is the harmonizer ring in the set of alchemist rings, which is exists right there between all things, frequency, light, sound, and consciousness. And I call it like a cosmic blender in that it is bringing more consciousness into the physicality, sound, light, frequency, all of that. And then the divine I am that you were asking about, if that's in the wisdom energetics, the divine I am is the energy of the soul. And so those three energies come together to form the wisdom energy tools. Uh, Brenda, what's the best way to send healing to another person? So, gosh, best way is to truly be in your light, expanded, um, grounded. So basically, as you go into the heart space and you invite in your light, what we see healing truly is when we are working with another is, is that your soul, as you stand there with your soul, it holds those higher potentials for another soul. So you bring another person into your awareness as you're standing in your light. And it is bringing that to their soul. Their soul is the one that does the healing. Um, you know, the other way that we, you know, like what Brenda has always done traditionally, um, what she's kind of incorporates this and moves past a lot of this too, is simply visualization, imagination, and intention while you're in the heart space. So like for Brenda, if I would ask her to, if I had a rib out, this is my always prime example, I have a rib out. And if she looks at that, um, she can see that the rib is out and simply she goes into the heart space and just visualizes, uses her imagination and intention that that rib is in place and you can feel it move into place. So, you know, it, there's a lot more depth to it than that because there's, there's such things as not projecting and not trying to fix or heal. Um, it's simply holding that space. So there is a lot of ways that you can send that healing energy to people. Um, you know, you can use like a Vedar coil and put a tensor field generator on top of it and just 
imagine that that person is in that field. I'm, so if you use a tensor field generator on top of beta coil, what it's doing is amplifying everything. And you can do it simply by writing their name you know, on a piece of paper and dropping it in there, or putting their photo. That's kind of you know ceremonial stuff. But really, if, if you just simply intend, because the tensor field generators will hold those programs and attentions. So that's why we would use a generator on top of there. You just put in there, okay, send this healing to Aunt Jane. And then it will hold that and it will broadcast that to her. Um, because again, part of doing healing work with others is not stepping into, um, into projecting something that you feel, oh, poor Aunt Martha has cancer and she needs healed because Aunt Martha and her soul, that might be their path and what they're doing. And you can't step in and violate that. But you can step in and share your light with them. Your light is simply higher potentials and possibilities. So as you step in and you hold your light for Aunt Martha, then she receives those higher potentials and possibilities. And then her soul is what does the healing work. It opens up new pathways, new doorways, new creations. Um, and so you just holding your light with somebody is phenomenal healing. You can use the tools too. So if you imagine Aunt Martha standing in your Vedar coil, just imagine her standing there. You could also run energy with your wand. That's what we do in some of our classes is we use the wand and we have somebody go into another room, somebody in this room, and we pretend to, we imagine wanding a body part, like a big toe. And then we wait until they can feel it and tell you what part of their body you're wanting. So it's amazing how, because these are quantum fields, so you can run that energy. So if you're using a tool, um, you know, again, you can imagine them standing on the spadar coil or in a ring or imagine them standing there and you're just wanting them. So that's how you can send that healing energy distantly. And again, when we, when we run energy and we're in the heart space and we are simply intending to send them these potentials, this higher energy, and then they and their soul choose then for what is in their alignment. And when you hold that higher light, your higher potentials, they have more potentials to choose from because so many times we get stuck in this box of limited potentials for creation, for soul growth learning, which we're done with. And so when you hold your higher potentials outside that box, that is where the magic takes place. Uh, JR, the wisdom wands, Special only applies to the large one, not dependent or mini. Can I mix and match? No, nope. um, we're only, I'm really only pushing the big wands. Um, and that's where our, our special is, is on, on those big wands because the, the mini wands and the pendants, um, you know, they're, they're still fantastic. I mean, they, they all hold the same field. But the larger one is just, it feels more tangible. And it's just, to me, it's the one to, to really use. The other ones I feel are, are more passive and you can still use them to run energy. But the big one is the one that, um, for really getting in and doing the work, because when you feel it as tangible, then your body, your mind are both like, like okay, this is, this is working, this is a real thing. And then you allow it more. Um, but that is for most people, not to say that anybody just can't pick up the, the miniature and do the same thing, which you certainly can. Um, could I elaborate on it's their soul that does the healing? Um, yeah, and again, because we're not, we can't violate their, not only their free will as the human to choose to hold on to whatever it is, but we also cannot, um, you know, push them off of their path and their journey. And so, you know, it used to be years ago that, you know, people always said, well, I have to get this person's permission to do energy work with them, to do this healing work with them. And that is because it was human to human. 
and and we could violate the free will of a human by doing that when we go soul to soul you don't need to ask human because you're working with their soul and their soul is the one that is truly um their higher self however you see and say that is um is is the one that really does does the work so um like brenda when she steps in with her a line bringing in her light she is standing there embodying her light with all those higher potentials then somebody here that's in this box as their soul comes in then they can start to release their those limited potentials and then they can between the human and the soul can see that that is that that's not the only choice that there's so much more and then that is when they start to release and start to create then health healing abundance all of that um marcia i have an eight and a half inch cosmic sun disc that came with the pyramid does it contain the wisdom energy i sleep it underneath my pillow and i have the most incredible dreams so that um that cosmic sun disc that comes with the pyramid is actually the regeneration energy um that is one that was really the first tool that we saw that was so that one is doing kind of like it, it's very similar to the wisdom but it in that it is bringing more of consciousness into the physical so really that cosmic sun disc truly is, is about anchoring in your light into the physical and and so it's working a lot on the physical is what that that taurus is that that tube taurus the cosmic sun disc but when you have that cosmic sun disc with your entire pyramid the ascension pyramids totally contain the wisdom energetics and and more um, those ascension pyramids are what is holding the most leading edge of the energies that 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 we're creating um, because of all the components it is able to hold an even higher field than than the wisdom i mean this is it's it's holding the highest potential fields that that we have um which um yeah, so hopefully it answers the question um marie does the horse harmonizer have something extra that the divine i am ring doesn't what does the horse harmonizer do for dairy cattle so the horse harmonizer um it used to be the divine i am i think the horse harmonizer is now shifted into that wisdom energetics and um so that horse harmonizer ring which is a, a um it's a really thin gauge larger 26 inch ring a practitioner ring and and yes it certainly does work with uh dairy cattle it works with any critters um from plants to soil to soil biome um to animals water people and all animals and so that that wisdom energetics is just simply holding that higher space to allow release um and to bring that balance to things because we see as healing is simply release and rebalance and for like animals sometimes they just get an imbalance and so you know they usually don't except for you know our domesticated animals like to hold a lot of our crap so when you use a wisdom ring with a domesticated animal, then yes, we have a release going on and then rebalance, which then equals healing. But you can have an imbalance. And with that, yes, using that large ring, even with the dairy cattle, um, it just brings them balanced, which is where the healing takes place. So, and I never even thought about that. It really would be great to use with dairy cattle because when you bring them into the stall and you put that around their neck, I mean, that is going to, who is, you should be able to see a physical difference of them just releasing and relaxing. Um, is using the tensor tools different for women than it is for men? Nope, not at all. Um, nope, not at all. Yeah, there's absolutely no difference and there's absolutely no difference like in the northern southern hemisphere we get that question you know quite often because you know um toilet bowls spend the opposite direction in the southern hemisphere so you know a lot of people talk about how the the, the board sees the energies but um no the, the tensor tools are pretty um 
What's the word I'm looking for? They're for, for everybody and everything everywhere. Uh, Linda, I've not been inclined to put together the do-it-yourself Taurus yet. I'm not sure why. Was I waiting for the new openings? <laughs> Possibly. So, you know, that do-it-yourself Taurus, which we do have on clearance, you guys. So if anybody's interested in building your own Taurus and bringing in your energetics into it, that do-it-yourself Taurus kit is, is on clearance. I think we might still have a couple left. Um, and then there's a video that you watch to do that. But it's... You know, it's one of those things, if you like to wrap wire, <laughs> then it's up your alley. But if you're not into doing, you know, into creating that intricate thing, then it, it might not be for you. But, um, yeah, I'm I'm curious about that too, Linda, because as, as Linda was saying, um, was I waiting for the new opening? And, you know, I really feel that there's new energies coming in too. And this opening that's just occurred on the 22nd is just basically allowing us to more easily connect, more easily embody our light. Um, and so, you know, it, it would be a prime time to work on that Taurus because you really can bring in that light into that structure as you're creating it. Uh, JR, what can I use to harmonize a shower head or any tap? Will a chalice bracelet work? So what we see with like, um, you know, putting a ring over a shower head or a faucet, um, garden hose, any of those kinds of things is that, you know, it really does take traditionally a tensor ring takes what, four to six hours to restructure water. So when you put a ring over flowing water, innately it will not restructure it, but it will clear the energetics of it and it will start to bring in more of its consciousness and light. But to have water exposed to that field for a longer time, that is really where you get that, that physical restructuring and, and bringing in all of its consciousness. Now, when we created the alchemist set of rings, that trio, and that's what our water rings, if you get the trio, instead of four to six hours, it takes it down to two to four hours. And we've seen using the Badar coil, it takes it down to less than two hours that it will do all the physical restructuring of the water. So when you put a ring over the shower head or the knot or the faucet, um, now that's what i was saying is that it innately that's what it is but with your attention onto there and your intentions of helping to bring in that consciousness of water and especially if you imagine that when you put that ring over the faucet that you are sending that light all the way through all of the water as it is connected to itself all the way back to your local holding tank, you know, your water towers or the wells. So when you put your ring over your shower head and you're getting ready to take a shower, go into the heart space, imagine that light flowing all the way through that entire water system back to its source as it comes from the ground. And then have the intention of connecting with that spirit of water. So what I'm trying to say is, is that like with those three rings, our last water ring webinar that we did, um, yeah, I think it was in 21 or 2021, there was a meditation on there. I think that was in December, 2021, where you basically bring in the consciousness of water. And when you hold the space and bring in that consciousness of water, we're seeing that it does that physical restructuring instantly. And so, yes, you can totally, when you put that ring over your shower head or your faucet and you go into the heart and you really connect with that essence of water and invite it into embody itself. <sighs> That is all you need. And that is doing everything that you will want to do with your water right there is when you hold space and fight water to embody itself. And then the tensor ring simply becomes a tool of your attention onto there. 
Um, and then putting the ring on the hot water tank is a fantastic thing to do because when you, where the hot water heater has your water in there and you put a ring on it, it is going to help restructure that water, which will then allow all of those heavy minerals to just fall out instead of clumping together. So any of you who have hard water and you know that every few years you have to pull your heating elements out of your water tank and clean out all the scaling in your water tank. Basically, when you use a tensor ring on your tank, it is going to help that water. It's going to help prevent as much of that scaling because it is basically allowing those heavy minerals to just simply fall out, dissipate out of the water instead of clumping together which is a pretty fantastic thing. All right, so just jumping over here to chat. Hey, Marsha, thanks for recommending the Soul Alchemy class. Um, and just a mention from Victoria on the Wisdom Wand. I have now taken to taking it with me everywhere I go. My day goes so much more easily. I also had a difficult situation where I couldn't get important documents due to my driver's license having expired. On a retry, I used the wisdom wand to send energy ahead of me. Whew, I feel that to dissolve all difficulties and everything went smoothly the next time. I can't imagine being without it. Oh, I really feel that. So yeah, there you go. There's another prime example of the way that you can use consciousness and these energies is that you simply send that energy out before you so that everything comes into alignment as you step in. Um, hey, Renard. Um, and then Rochelle, I put the water ring over my well's pressure tank. I imagine that the water in the 80 gallon tank has enough time to be positively affected. True. Yes, most definitely. And so, yep. If you have a well, or if you have reverse osmosis water, you'll have a pressure tank that contains water. And that is the perfect place to put a tensor ring over because that will restructure that water. And as new water comes in and it meets with the water that is already embodying its light and it's restructured then that new water that comes in everything happens faster with it so um yes using if you have a pressure tank in your water system that is the ideal place to put the rain uh, does the physical restructuring of the water include the removal and or transformation of fluoride and other non-desirable elements in water so you know yes we uh, and that is something that Dancing with Water also looked at too, was that, um, and we looked at as well, that when you put a water ring with your water and your water has fluoride in it, it will change that fluoride to be something that is more beneficial to you. Um, it, it, it changes the energetics of it. Kind of like, um, well, let's just take an example, pharmaceuticals. Pharmaceuticals can be, very non-beneficial because of the energetic component to it. But again, when you put it into a ring or the Bader coil, we love the Bader coils to put pharmaceuticals, because when you put that in there, it clears it energetically and it also helps to harmonize all of that on the physical as well. But as far as clearing the, um, the fluoride from water, you know, there, there have been tests that show that yes, it does change the fluoride. Every time I've done it in one of our local labs, our lab technicians are <laughs> right. That's not true. And of course, as we all know that when you are conducting experiments, the experiment reflects the consciousness, intention and input of the person doing the experiment. Um, so I haven't got it to actually shift where they check. But when we look at it and we see fluoride that has been added to the drinking water, you put it in a ring for that two to four hours that we're seeing that that is no longer, that is everything in that water is now beneficial to you. Where that tap water that you get when you check it, it might not be beneficial. And a lot of that is to, again, that sodium fluoride that they put in drinking water that is mandated for all towns over the population of 5,000 people. 
And then using uh, Hedica and Shungite with your water ring is really fantastic, as mentioned here, too. All right. Um, can you use just the Badar ring to clear water? Yes, so that, that ring that's in here in the Badar coil, this this ring is really fantastic. It's it, the ring itself you can get on the Badar coil page. It's our cheapest ring, 21 bucks for this ring. And it's a light gauge. And I never imagined that this fit over people's wrists. I could not imagine that. Here's a nice little patinaed one I carry in my pocket. Definitely doesn't fit over my wrist. But I have seen so many women the past few, past month, that have been able to fit this Badar coil over their wrist. And it makes a fine bangle. So actually, um, I'm doing, we're doing a, uh, a time study on a prototype for to to release this bangle and uh, one that is in that larger size that 222 ring which is a little bit larger so then you will be able to fit it over almost every average well, almost every female hand um and, and some males can fit that 222 ring 222 millimeters um, around the wrist but yeah using just this ring with the water is absolutely perfect and, you know, like the gals at Dancing with Water say, MJ and Melanie, is, is that water does not require those heavier gauge rings. You know, we were kind of talking about the thicker wisdom wand, and it's the same with, like, you know, the heavy gauge practitioner rings. That, you know, for people, we kind of need to perceive that energy. Water does not. This holds the same field as the heavy gauge wisdom rings, the 23 inch heavy gauge wisdom ring. This holds the exact same field. The energy is this, the, just as potent. Now, Dancing with Water has, has what, what they say is that those heavier gauge rings can actually do a disservice to the water, that it is almost too much on the physical. And so, you know, they say not to use a really super heavy gauge for the water, but, um, yeah, this is absolutely a perfect gauge and ring to use on the water. All right. So yeah, I guess we do have um, a couple things coming through that that may be new coming up, and that's the we'll have some bangles, and again we'll have one that's like this Bader coil ring, a little bit larger, and they'll be listed probably as light bangles. I think is what I'm going to call them light bangle small and extra small this will be the extra small um so anyway <sighs> all right shall we do a couple of quick meditations you guys um would love to walk you through a couple of things here and um yeah uh victoria states the beta coils fit on top of the lid of my travel water containers perfectly I also have one under my cat's water bowl. <laughs> That's fantastic. And they fit right in your cup holders of your car. So I keep one in the cup holder in my car. And that way, you know, whatever beverage I have. Yeah, love, love the Bader coils. They're, they're pretty fantastic. Um, let's see, what else for announcements? Um, again, if you're in Cincinnati area and you want to come play, get a hold of me. And... I'm trying to think of what other shows are coming up on the books. I think we have another one in Fort Collins here at the beginning of April. Um, let's see, working at getting into the American Society of Dowsers for doing a presentation and some workshops there. And that'll be in upstate New York in June. Um, so if you're interested in dowsing, I would sure suggest to check out the American Society of Dowsers. Um, if you're in the US, if you're not in the US, it's okay too. And let's see. So I think if we are done with questions, we're gonna go ahead and jump into a couple of meditations I would love to share that are so simple and easy. There's stuff that we do in our soul alchemy class. Um, <clears throat> So if, you, if you'd like to join us here in this meditation, here we go. This one is one that I would like 
for you to ask for the clearing and release to embody your light more. So as we go through lifetimes, you know, when, when we first came here and incarnate from soul, we put this veil over us in order to have these experiences. We put ourselves in a little box of limited potentials so that we could create soul growth and learning. And, you know, most of us remember more of the horrific thing through the lifetimes. And those are usually the things that come up and haunt us later is, is those more dreadful, horrific things. <sighs> but first, I would like for us to go into the heart space. And then we're going to ask for the releasing of these veils that keep us separate from us and our soul, us and our light. And we're also going to release any of the traumas any of the old oaths or vows that we took, you know, one of my lifetimes, I just damned creator. And that was one of the ones that Brenda found early on in my growth that we had to release and clear was my just total disdain for God. And that too helped to keep me separate from seeing that I am a spark of the I am. So here we go, going into the heart space. Again, attention to the heart, connecting with the energy of earth and bring, breathing that into the heart. To be fully grounded and in your body. Connecting with you as creator God, as soul, breathing in that light into the heart. That third breath and the Trinity breath is where you become that column of light that's grounded, connected. And from here, we simply ask to release the veil between us and soul, between you and soul. And we ask ourselves to release any of the old oaths, vows, promises, beliefs, traumas that keep us separate from soul. And just breathing in and allowing your light to flow into the physical. And it's not a trying or a doing. It is simply you allowing your soul, your light to step more fully in. And so as you're taking those deep breaths, and if you feel those tingles in the body, that is your light. And you can simply ask that your light stay present in every cell, in between every cell, and in your life. Again, this is where the magic is, is embodying your light. Okay, so if you haven't watched that Crimson Circle event, well, I'm going to just walk you through this exercise, what they call the soul altar it is also what we did in our soul alchemy class. It's a very simple exercise in that you imagine before you is your soul altar, that place where you bring those things that you wish to hand over to soul, to God, the situations, the old traumas, the the crying for no reason, the sadness, whatever that is, simply take that, sit that on your soul altar, bow with gratitude and step away, leaving that with soul. And then soul gives it back to you as wisdom. So anything that comes up in your awareness, Anything that does not bring you joy and fulfillment. Imagine taking that, opening up your arms, just grabbing it, setting it on the soul altar, setting it down, a bow of gratitude and stepping away. So that is what you can do for anything that surfaces. It's kind of like using our wisdom wand. It's just simply another exercise. But now then, let's gather up everything that we're not aware of. 
all energies that no longer serve us, all energies that prevent us from fully embodying our light. And gathering those up and setting that all on your soul altar. Everything, identity, anything that prevents you from embodying your light fully, we simply leave with soul. And we step back and we give our utmost gratitude because all of these things served us in the highest and best and some things for eons. And we are complete with those so that we can truly embody our light and step in as creators with higher potentials. Awesome. All right, everybody. Happy spring in the northern and happy beautiful fall in the southern. And um, yeah, we'll see you again soon. And uh, yeah, I guess that's all I got. Take care, you guys. Thank you for being here. Um, appreciate it and have a phenomenal, phenomenal weekend.